Monday morning. Have you ever stopped to consider the impact of your words? Every now and then, we can see the impact. Recently, Philly and I were in the car and I said something and immediately I saw the little, you know, twitch in the jaw start and I saw the grip on the steering wheel get tighter and I realized that I had really um, struck a chord in his heart with my words. And then there are other times that I can speak words of life to him and I see life come into him and his smile gets bigger and his chest puffs out a little bit more and I really can see the impact of my words. And I'm sure you know the same thing, whether it's been to a friend or a child or a coworker or a spouse. And I am a firm believer in the passage of scripture in Proverbs 18, 21 that says death and life are in the power of the tongue and they who indulge it shall eat the fruit of it. This is the amplified version for death or for life. Our words have the ability to create life or death. Now, if you think about it, God spoke the worlds into existence. Genesis 1 is all about God speaking, and we are told that we are made in his image. And then we are clearly told here that death and life exist in this tongue, the very tongue that, that James compares to the rudder of a ship, that such a small thing can, that small little rudder can move that entire ship. The same thing with our tongue. It can move our entire being, and it can move the hearts and lives of others by what we say. Philly and I are in a situation in our lives that's very challenging. And if we did nothing but look at it from a natural perspective, we could easily speak words of hopelessness in it. But God has given us a book of promises. That's why I'm such a firm believer in praying scripture because God has given us this word and in the life of a believer, these are our promises. And so what I do, instead of choosing to see our situation in the brokenness that it's in, I look at it through eyes of faith, doing um, what the Bible talks about, calling those things that are not as though they are. And so I look at the situations of our life and I speak to them based on what God's promises have given me. And so I don't speak death over our situation, even though a lot of people may look at it and say, honey, that's the most hopeless situation I've ever seen. And I'm like, but I don't serve a hopeless God. I serve a father who keeps his word. And so I hold on to the promises of God and I speak life into this situation and God honors our faith. He meets our faith. And so... I think it's also important to know that what Matthew says in 1234, this is the New Living Translation, for whatever is in your heart determines what you say. Another translation says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when I'm in a season and I hear all these critical words coming out of my mouth and everything I'm saying is negative and I'm just miss doom and gloom and I don't know how God's going to do this or that, then I can rest assured that there's something going on in my heart that I need to pay attention to. And so I need to recalibrate. Maybe I need to dig a little deeper into the Word of God. Maybe I need to pay attention to whom I'm allowing to speak into my life. It's very important who we trust with our heart. Because not everybody's going to come at our hearts with these words of faith. Let me tell you something. If I'm in a crisis situation, I want your faith coming to me. If my marriage is in a crisis, I want your faith coming to me. If my children are in a crisis, I want your faith coming to me. If my, my health is in a crisis, I want friends in my life who are speaking faith. So be careful who you're in relationship with. And pay attention to the words that come from your mouth. And there's this passage of scripture in, in Proverbs 12. Proverbs is just so full of powerful things. 
But this is this is an arresting passage. It says in Proverbs 12, 18, there are those who speak rashly like the piercing of a sword. There's another one of those visual pictures that the Lord is giving us. When we choose to use our words for death in people are to always point out their faults or to always be critical or negative and speak words of hopelessness and not words of faith, then it is like piercing the piercing of their hearts with a sword. And I don't know any of us that would want to do that to anyone friend or foe and so but it says I always love that there are buts in scripture but the tongue of the wise brings healing friends when I encounter the heart of my husband or my bonus children or those that I work with or do life with I don't want to see the impact of my words bring their countenance down or make their fists clench the steering wheel tighter. I want to see the words of my mouth putting a kick in their step and a lift to their chest and a smile on their face. Life and death exist in this one small place. So pay attention this week to what comes out of this small instrument knowing that it has great impact and life or death dwell 